The story of the Bloodline in World Wrestling Entertainment has been one of the most intriguing and entertaining storylines that the company has ever created. It all started three years ago when Roman Reigns officially adopted the title of the Tribal Chief by winning the Universal Championship. From there, he consistently referred to himself as the head of the table, the leader of the Samoan family. This story has had so many twists and turns and has left us wondering what comes next the entire time. That's why... Today I'm going to be giving my theory on how I think the Bloodline story is going to end. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with the Bloodline story, essentially what it was is that Roman Reigns, um, when he returned after battling with leukemia and everything else, he returned essentially as a heel and won the Universal Championship, and from then on he started this new Tribal Chief gimmick, or the head of the table, where he essentially felt like he was the head of their family, um, the, or the head of the Samoan like Bloodline within you know, they're part of the Samoan dynasty and stuff, the Anawaii family, essentially. And throughout those year, throughout the last couple of years, with Roman being the universal champion for three and a half years, I think it's about three and a half, something like that, but it's definitely been at least over a thousand days at this point. Throughout those three years, he recruited his cousins, the Usos, like, basically had to torture them almost into joining his cause and fighting alongside him to sort of represent their family and make sure that their family name doesn't get discredited is basically what his whole gimmick has been this entire time. But he's that sort of villain who is just trying to do the right thing in his mind, but he has to do bad things in order to accomplish his goals. And I think that's been portrayed really well by Roman Reigns and the Usos as well. Like, they've been conflicted with, you know, whether or not they should follow Roman. Like, some of the things Roman has done over the years since this all started, they're kind of not fans of, but they've kind of had to fall in line or sort of get out of the family, essentially. And I like where they've gone with this, and they even introduced Solo Sokoa into it, who's the Usos' younger brother. You know, and he's kind of sided with Roman through all of this and even turned against his own brothers when they decided they no longer wanted to be a part of this, which happened very recently, like before the Money in the Bank pay-per-view and stuff, and we saw that Roman and Solo teamed up against the Usos. There's all kinds of bits and pieces that have been thrown at us throughout this entire three-year story, and I think it's been one of WWE's greatest storylines that they've ever told. A lot of people complain that, you know, WWE hasn't always been good at these long-term stories. Well, I think this one has been their best one that I've seen, at least. Because I wasn't watching wrestling during the Attitude Era, so if there was anything, these really good stories throughout that period of time, I have no idea. But I've been following with this one, and while it has gotten slow at some times, you know, um, as most f movie franchises do the same kind of thing, you know, they get slow in the middle, sort of, and then pick back up again when you have this epic climax like for example the marvel cinematic universe did this we had to watch 22 23 movies before it got to the main like that final battle in avengers endgame kind of thing with their main villain you know the avengers had to come together to finally defeat them and all the characters we've seen and all the moments that we've watched built up to that and led to that incredible moment in that final movie, and then now they're kind of branching off and doing other things to set up a new saga. That's kind of what's happening here with the Bloodline story as well, because there's so many different directions they could go with it, where they could keep this going on for years without having it be focused around the Universal Championship. And that's kind of what I'm going to talk about today, because it was speculated on the last episode of SmackDown, which was the follow-up to the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, as of this recording, it was this past Friday, and it looks like they're building to a story with Roman Reigns defending the Universal Championship against Jey Uso. This would be the third time that Jey and Roman have fought each other during this whole Bloodline story thing. The first two times was for Roman to try and get Jey to join his cause, like he fought against Jey. Jey fought him for the championship, and both times he came up short because of something that happened, whether it was Roman forcing him to quit in their I Quit match that they had because he was punishing Jimmy Uso, etc. So this would be the third time that they fight each other, and it's looking like Jay 
might actually win the Universal Championship and they might actually strap the belt on him. Now, there's a couple different directions that this could go, but I feel like that might not be what they have planned to end all of this, to end this Bloodline story. I have another theory. So what I think is going to happen is at SummerSlam, Roman Reigns will actually retain the Universal Championship against Jey Uso. It'll be a hard-fought match or whatever. Maybe Jimmy will get involved. Maybe Solo will get involved. It'll be your typical Roman Reigns match that we've seen over these last three years where the referee gets knocked out and there's interference or whatever, whether to help Roman or to hinder him or whatever. And Roman always overcomes the odds and ends up winning the match. And I think Roman will still win this match here. Jay will come so close to winning that something will happen where Roman will win, whether it's Solo interfering and helping Roman, even though that's his, that's Solo's brother Jay that's fighting Roman, you know, kind of thing. We've seen this tension with Solo where, like, the Usos are trying to get Solo to come with them because they feel that Roman has been corrupted and Solo's just been kind of blindly following Roman this whole time, maybe because it's been building Solo up. And that's what I think it'll be really special when Solo turns on Roman so I think Roman will retain the Universal Championship against Jay in this match at SummerSlam, and then after the match he'll start beating up Jay or something like that, and maybe he'll try to force Solo Sokoa to end Jay's career or something like that. And that's the kind of thing that like Solo would finally sort of snap out of this trance that he's in, where he's been following Roman this whole time, and I think he'll realize, like, well, I can't do that to my brother. I've helped you do this stuff, I've beat them up and everything else, but I'm not going to end his career. And without saying those words, Solo won't say anything. I think he'll just turn and give Roman Reigns his, the Samoan Spike, which, as we've seen, has been built up as this really powerful move. Even when Umaga did it back in the, like, I forget, 2000-whatever, when Umaga was still alive, and still wrestling in WWE. That was a finishing move that he did where he'd take his thumb and basically poke it into someone's neck and win the match because they were, like, choked out. You know, he'd pin them. They couldn't recover from that. And we saw how powerful it's been when Solo Sokoa does it as well. He's won matches with it. Even a couple weeks ago on SmackDown, he hit Ridge Holland with it, and Ridge hasn't recovered from it. Like, even the week after, Ridge had a match with... Um, Austin Theory for the United States Championship, and he lost that match because of a drop kick from Austin Theory to his neck, which was perfect selling on Ridge's part because it's showing the effects of how powerful that Samoan spike really can be. So I think it'll be really epic when Solo hits Roman with that move, and Roman is like laid out in the middle of the ring at SummerSlam after getting hit by that. He's choking, he's gasping for air or whatever, and Solo will leave with the Usos or whatever, leaving Roman vulnerable in the middle of the ring. And this is where everything will start to crumble for the Bloodline story, because now Roman is truly alone. He has lost his entire family, which is kind of what's been teased this whole time, but they took a while to get to this point, but I like the slow build to it. He had to lose his family before he can lose his championship. Like, he had to lose the Bloodline before he would finally be vulnerable enough for someone to take the title. And that someone will be the current Money in the Bank holder, Damian Priest. I think after Roman gets hit by the Samoan Spike and is laid out in the ring and the Usos and Solo leave, I think Damian Priest comes down, cashes in his Money in the Bank contract, and wins the Universal Championship. Now this also accomplishes something else. First of all, it'll be the first successful Money in the Bank cash, and we've seen it in a good while, I think, and one that is really impactful as well. I think the fans would be shocked by this, like Damian Priest cashing in on Roman Reigns, because no one's been able to take this title off of Roman all this time. And also, it puts the title on Damian Priest, and it also gives them an excuse to get Damian Priest out of the Judgment Day, because now, since they're a raw act, Damian Priest would have to go to SmackDown, to remain as Universal Champion, and that's where you can have that split of the Judgment Day that they've sort of been teasing on Raw and stuff lately with Finn Balor, and maybe get, they can recruit the new member with J.D. McDonough, which has kind of also been rumored and we've kind of seen playing out on Raw as well. And I think that that's a nice way to get Damian Priest to move to SmackDown and have a maybe good six-month-long reign as the Universal Champion or whatever, make him this credible champion 
to follow Roman Reigns, where he'll have some really good matches and stuff, and it won't just be the same type of matches we've seen all this time. Meanwhile, to continue the Bloodline story, it will all culminate at the Payback pay-per-view, which comes up after SummerSlam in September, and that's where we will have Roman Reigns versus Solo Sokoa for essentially the title of the true tribal chief. So it'll be for the power of running the whole family, essentially. And I think the best way they could do this is to have Solo win that match. Because for one, we've seen Roman win enough matches lately. He's been undefeated until he was just recently pinned at Money in the Bank by Jey Uso in that tag team match I mentioned earlier. And so I think it would be good for him to finally lose since he lost his championship, but it was a, it would be a quick match to Damian Priest because Priest cashes in his money in the bank. So that doesn't necessarily count as him like losing a full-on regular match. And I think a match with Solo Sokoa would also put over Solo as the next tribal chief. Meanwhile, when Solo wins, we could have Roman leave for a while because it's been rumored that he wants to go to Hollywood now. So maybe Roman takes a year or something off from WWE or whatever. And this can be how you end that. And then to continue with the Bloodline, it's now Solo and the Usos as a trio faction of the Bloodline, with Solo being the Solo superstar, essentially, the one winning all the singles titles, like the U.S. title. Maybe he even beats Damian Priest for Universal title somewhere down the line after this story plays out. And you can have the Usos win the tag team titles back. They can be this thriving, dominant faction again without their corrupted cousin you know, making them do things that they don't want to do and sort of belittling them at every turn because they're all brothers. Roman and, or I mean, uh, Solo and the Usos are actual brothers, so they're actual, you know, close bloodline family. And I think that will make that faction work out really well. And then from there, I think they could have, maybe Roman goes away for a year, like I said, and maybe he returns with two other Samoans from some other wrestling promotion or something, like maybe they, their contracts are up and they need somewhere to go, so they get recruited by WWE to join Roman in this other bloodline faction or something where Roman has this new dominant force, and Roman and these two guys take on the Usos and Solo, and that could be this whole other thing, they tie it back in, maybe have Roman win the title again, I don't know if they would do that or not. Because honestly, this storyline doesn't really need the championship involved anymore. So maybe they don't need to go that route and put the title back on Roman. But I think having him return in a big way with this new faction or something could continue this bloodline story. or And like pick it back up as if it's like a brand new saga. Kind of similar to like I mentioned earlier with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You have like that saga of the bloodline is over with these three years that we've seen. And now we get this new side of it, and it can continue. I just love the way that WWE has done this over the last few years, having this family drama play out uh, between Roman and Solo and the Usos and all that stuff, and even throwing Sami Zayn in there for a while, having him join the bloodline as well, and he's the one that sort of stirred the tension between Roman and the Usos. And now it's kind of where we're starting to see that slowly come into effect. Like, Roman is starting to lose everything. He's starting to lose his grip and his power that he's had over his family all this time. I think it's been really incredible the way that they've played this out. And I think a lot of fans have really enjoyed seeing these Bloodline stories. Because at the end of the day, pro wrestling is still just a drama. You know, like, or at least WWE is. Like, they're that entertainment. They're, they're wrestling entertainment, whereas other things are pro wrestling, you know, like they're meant to be this sort of drama TV series, whereas the other wrestling companies are straight up wrestling and don't really focus much on these long term stories a lot of the time. And that's kind of what, what made this so different was WWE showed that they can do this long term storytelling with this bloodline stuff. And I think it's gonna if it's going to end at least this current iteration of the bloodline I think this is the perfect way to end it, having Solo beat Roman. And it can end at the payback pay-per-view as well. And pick up maybe next year or whatever, or just don't continue at all. We just have Solo and the Usos as a team for the rest of whatever until they all leave WWE someday. Kind of like with New Day being a team for the last like 10 plus years or whatever. You could just have Solo and the Usos be a team. 
maybe even break them up eventually and continue the dissension there as well, where they all go their separate ways or something. You know, there's so many ways that they can go with this, and I kind of like that about this particular story within WWE. There's nothing else really as good as this to mention, so that's kind of why I wanted to do my theory on this as well. And it's also a cool way to get the title off of Roman without him necessarily losing it to a family member. Because I think if they have him lose it to like one of the Usos or something, I think that's kind of a cheap way because it makes like Jey Uso better than people like Edge or John Cena or Brock Lesnar or anybody that couldn't beat Roman over these last three years. And I don't think he is that caliber of a superstar where he's better than any of them. So I think it would be the wrong choice for them to have Jay be the one that beats Roman. So if it were to end this way, I think it's perfect if you have the money in the bank cash in, take the title off of Roman because of the dissension within Roman's family. And that's enough of a distraction to sort of make him lose his way and not be focused enough where he finally loses the championship. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. How do you think the Bloodline story is going to end in WWE? What do you want to see next um, once this storyline does wrap up? Like, where do you want these characters, you know, these wrestlers to go next? Essentially, what do you think is going to happen with the Usos and Solo and all of them after all of this eventually comes to an end? Whenever it does, even if it's not a payback or whatever. I'd love to hear all of your theories. Also, be sure to like this video and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching this video, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.